Good afternoon. I am Joe Heng, founder of Climate Tech Corp Singapore, and today we will be presenting the Climate Control Quantum Resonance Water, or QRW in short, the next revolution in cooling tower water treatment technology. A little bit of background of water treatment for cooling towers. Cooling towers are designed to conserve water and dissipate heat from the building's aircon and mechanical ventilation systems. As water evaporates during this heat exchange, the concentration of the minerals in the water increase, thus leading to a need for water treatment. Poor water treatment leads to increased costs for buildings. Scaling, corrosion, and biological fouling results when mineral and bacterial concentration in water increase. And this could be actually what you see when you go on site. When fouling occurs, it leads to degradation of equipment, loss of efficiency, and more energy consumed. And this leads to increased operating expenditure for buildings. This table shows the thickness of scale relative to the reduction in cooling capacity and the resultant increase in power consumption. These numbers are not insignificant. And in the worst case scenario, it leads to equipment failure, disruption of operations, imagine no aircon in the building, and eventually costly equipment replacement. These are all unplanned capex. And here we look at the state of current market offerings for water treatment. Current market offerings face certain limitations and challenges. Traditional chemical dosing work to a certain extent, but struggle to meet the ever-increasing requirements of building sustainability and water conservancy. These are actual toxic and hazardous chemicals on site. On the other hand, electrolysis-based water treatment offerings have checkered history in meeting the code of practice for the control of Legionella bacteria in cooling towers. Imagine the potential of biohazards and health hazards on site. And so, users face a conundrum for the lack of a clear and viable solution. Can more be done? Yes, we believe that the QRW provides the answers and more. And here we introduce the climate control QRW. The QRW comprises a combination of strong magnets and ceramic based composites. It utilizes micromolecular water properties and photon vibration frequency principle in its approach to the treatment of water. Essentially, in layman's term, it is a water molecule slicer and an agitator. Here we show the workings of the QRW. Makeup feed water enters the QRW module, and these normal water particles comprise several H2O molecules held together by strong covalent bonds. Strong magnets within the QRW break up the covalent bonds to form small water particles. We term them micromolecular water, and micromolecular water carry inherent properties that inhibit organic and inorganic fouling, the fundamental preventive function that is required for cooling tower water treatment. These micromolecular water particles are then caused to collide in the QRW, creating low-frequency ultrasonic water with resonance tech energy. And we term them QRW water. QRW water removes archaic fouling, a unique rehabilitative function of the QRW. We liken this to the context of detoxing the human body of cholesterol. Improved equipment efficiency leads to improved body health. And so the value proposition of the QRW is simple and straightforward. It's chemical free, requires no power to operate, and it provides constant and consistent treatment with no mechanical and electrical failure risk. And in general, Greenmark buildings require seven cycles of concentration, COC or better. Current market offerings, four to 15 at best COC. All QRW sites are currently running 20 to more than 30 COC. And so the benefits of QRW are significant and unique. It saves water, saves energy, and it reduces maintenance. In addition, QRW water is recyclable and can be used to reduce or displace other building water usage, such as plant irrigation or toilet flushing. This results in further water savings. And so, QRW raises the bar to unprecedented standards for cooling tower water treatment. And QRW meets not just one, but three of the CSXC's focus criteria. Water conservation and resilience through water savings, low carbon transition through energy savings, and waste management and waste circular economy as QRW water is recyclable. In addition, it reduces maintenance and labor costs, critical in this current COVID-19 environment. And here we have an investment of less than 50,000, projected net savings of 20 to 30,000 per annum, payback estimated 20 to 27 months, Thereafter, the building enjoys and gleans the benefit of these sustainability efforts. So how does the QRW fit into the context of the CSXC? 
we note that more than 50% of the above properties have cooling towers. And the QRW is applicable and scalable. QRW specifically targets the largest contributors. For a typical commercial building, 40% of the water consumption, cooling towers. 40% of energy consumption, ACMV systems. So how far does capital land want to go in achieving sustainability and low carbon footprint goals? For every building looking into these aspects, QRW presents a compelling, viable, and workable alternative. And here we share Climatech's vision, empowering the environment. Why Climatech? Formed in 2011, we are a dedicated team of individuals with diverse backgrounds, each sharing a common goal to tackle climate change. Personally, I spent 12 years in investment banking and corporate oil and gas before embarking on this very different endeavor. Not easy, no smooth sailing, challenging to say the least, but the focus and the will have never wavered. And QRW is one of several technologies in the climate tech portfolio. It is unique, leading edge, yet straightforward to implement. QRW is also established with proven track records serving mission critical facilities such as oil and gas, semicon, and data centers of the largest telco in Singapore. And why now? ClimateX's objective is to find workable and viable solutions to tackle climate change, transform it from a niche, good to have non essential solution to a norm, a must have. And through this CSXC challenge, we are cognizant that capital land shares the same core value drivers. Sustainability can be achieved efficiently and effectively. The timing is now together. And so the saying goes. If Capital Land has the will, Climate Tech has the way. A very big thank you to our esteemed panel, the organizers, and our mentors who have taken precious time off to guide us on this incredible initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heng. Your seven minutes and your first question starts uh, with a question from Ms. Go Sui Chen. Hi, Joe Heng. Thanks uh, for that very uh, interesting pitch uh, for your solution. And I, I, I like what you say about the value proposition and the ability to apply the solution uh, on one of the most precious resources, water, and also to, to existing sites. My question to you is, uh, how do you intend to take this to market? Uh, have you thought through what are the challenges that uh, you would expect as you bring the solutions uh, out to uh, the, the market? Well, as you can um, see from the presentation slides, uh, the technology is actually um, three years in the running. We first installed in 2019. Uh, we've been taking a very careful measured approach. Uh, we have 10 sites currently uh, with our existing clients, uh, strong relationships, the uh, clients that trust us. So previously we were doing um, solid chemistry and we converted all these sites to um, the QRW. So bringing it to market is uh, the challenging part to us is, of course, the notion that, you know, so much can only be done on the uh, water treatment based on existing know-how. And very often, unfortunately or fortunately, we have been grouped with uh, the electrolysis type uh, water treatment. And when we breach this subject of uh, chemical-free water treatment, the first question we get more than half the time is, uh, do you have uh, bacteria issues? Do you get Legionella? And, and we, we, we spend a lot of time educating and you know, uh, trying to uh, present the, the case where we are actually very different. And, and so, yeah, uh, bringing it to market, we spent three years uh, carefully uh, working out the system, uh, test bedding it in our clients. They, they have, uh, fortunately have allowed us to to do this, and so far we, we have uh, zero incidences of uh, legionella bacteria and very successful uh, savings on the water blowdown and the associated uh, energy savings from the chillers. But uh, take note, do these are site specific, depending on the uh, level of degradation uh, of each site. With four minutes and 30 seconds to go, Mr. Rohit Sipahi Malani is next with a question. Hi, Joe. Uh, very impressive uh, presentation and uh, idea. Um, I had just two questions. One is that you talk about the payback for your customers being around two years. We want to get a sense of what your economics would be in that context. And associated with that, um, 
you know, what are the logistics of actually installing your solution? You talk about you know ceramics and magnets, etc., have to be installed. Is that um, a standardized process? How easy is it? How much customization does it require? And therefore, is it transportable? You know, again, uh, and scalable across, say, one locale like Singapore to other markets. How would you execute on that? Uh, thanks, Mr. Rohit. Um, if you had looked at the uh, very quick uh, seven-minute slide, you see some pictures of a metal contraction. Uh, that is actually the QRW. Uh, we also have a hard time uh, convincing our clients, you know, this is actually the system. There are no fancy buttons, screens, etc. So it is a uh, two-inch module for larger towers and a one-inch module for smaller ones. The uh, works are non-invasive. We basically treat the makeup water line. So we don't uh, interfere with the uh, condenser line at all. So uh, the question you asked on how easily it is uh, adoptable, it is adoptable in every single site. Uh, what we find the challenge is uh, the, the sites with uh, huge makeup water pipes, eight inch, et cetera, uh, that we need to uh, move to the, to the branch pipes for feeding the cooling tower. And um, on the maintenance, of course, uh, this has to be done by climate trained personnel. Uh, but the uh, beauty of this system is it's non-mechanical, non-electrical, and um, only the ceramic is a consumable depending on the flow rate of the water and the size of the cooling tower itself. So in fact, it's actually very simple, very straightforward. A lot of uh, planning and thinking has actually been done uh, pre pre-conception. Pre, uh, so it's very straightforward, uh, simple solution. And the most important thing is that we have a good record that it actually works, it delivers as promised. Okay, with about two and a half, two minutes and 15 seconds left, the ne next question, possibly the last one, is going to be from Dr. Chris Lukeman. Hello, Joe. Hey, you know, sometimes things almost seem too good to be true. And then what you're describing is like a no-brainer. It's like, well, okay, if this is so straightforward, why wouldn't we put this everywhere? I have one simple question. Does the ambient temperature or the temperature through the medium have any impact on the efficiency and effectiveness? Uh, no, it doesn't. Because actually the original idea was uh, to treat the uh, electrical heaters and the boilers, the boilers especially. So uh, we, we moved along and we discovered that actually the cooling tower is very similar because the essence of uh, degradation is fouling, whether it's biological or uh, organic, inorganic. So um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't affect the, uh, the, the ambient temperature does not uh, play a part. And actually we also have uh, moved on to start implementing this into the chill water loop uh, for the systems. And that we need to be cognizant because that being a chill loop, uh, if the system works too well, too quickly, there may be a uh, choke on the system. So we need to monitor the uh, filtration, uh, the built-in filtration to make sure that, you know, the flow is not inhibited. But yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And there's, and there's no additive effect of adding two. So you, you make micro micromolecules, you can't add two or three and reduce fouling. It's, it's a one-shot deal, right? It, 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 if you look at it in a layman's term, because I'm, I'm actually not a PhD, uh, you're wearing spectacles uh, when you have uh, dirt on your specs and sometimes you can't wipe it off. You bring it to the optical shop, they use the ultrasonic machine to vibrate the system. So what we have uh, come up with is something that doesn't require the immense uh, power to, to run the ultrasonic. Uh, and, we, and, and that is uh, the, the beauty of the system. And with that, you're out of time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Heng from the Climatech Corp Private Limited for sharing, us, uh, sharing with us your water treatment technology that utilizes you. photon vibration frequency technology to treat cooling tower heaters without the use of chemicals or power achieving water savings and energy savings.